Okay, everybody. Well, it's seven o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and kick things off. Um, we are being recorded and there is a text chat if you'd like to add some comments as we're going along. Um, unfortunately, the nature of the beast tonight is um, it'll be a lot of me as a talking head just because I'm trying to get everything that I've got in my mind as far as what the things we need to start off with. Um, and I somehow need to communicate that. So um, I, I it was mentioned before I turned the recording on that um, I tend to reserve this type of meeting for maybe once a month, just when I kind of see things need to be pulled together, we need to rein in and see how things are going. But for the most part, I really envision um, the teams will be getting together in smaller groups um, based on how things were assigned on the team chart. And we'll talk more in detail about how things were assigned as we get going. But um, I just wanted to welcome everybody and thank you so much for your service. Um, I, I truly, truly mean this. I cannot believe this works. Um, two years ago, I sent out a call for volunteers and just had an idea that we could work with a nonprofit that I'd heard about in, in um, Michigan. And, um, and lo and behold, people signed up and they were interested and we've grown and now we've got, you know, literally hundreds and hundreds of people who follow along with us on, on our email blasts and on social media. And then we've had uh, you know, upwards of 100 volunteers that have worked with us in the last 100 years, or 100 years, in the last two years, 100 people in the last two years. Um, and I, I really just thank everyone for um, devoting your free time to, um, to help with this, this cause. And here's our, you know, let me try to get rid of this. Can you guys see the um, annotations? I don't think we need to uh, have that on here. There we go. Um, so tonight, what, what I really want to do is make this all about um, the project and what it is, what the logistics of the project are, what our goals are, our needs, um, talk a little bit about how the teams are structured, what expe expectations are in terms of um, the roles on the projects, um, talk a little bit about time frames, um, and then start gearing up for next steps, where, as I mentioned a moment ago, we'll be kind of be breaking off into separate little project teams to tackle some of the deliverables that we need to get done. Um, and then we'll have certainly time at the end, um, but in terms of comments and, and questions as, um, as we get going, hang on a second, I keep, there we go. Um, as, as far as comments and questions, though, once we, um, once we get going, there is a text chat. We do have a pretty significant group tonight, um, and so if we all start talking once, it, it, we can kind of talk over each other. So um, if you maybe if you wouldn't mind using the text chat to just le at least let me know you have a question or a comment, and then I'll, I'll stop talking and then, you know, pass the mic to you. Um, but certainly feel free at any point to do that. And then, like I said, we'll, I'll, I'll definitely try to leave um, 15 minutes to 20 minutes toward the end of my my comments to give everybody a chance to to ask questions. So in terms of project logistics, um, I think this everybody's at least from what I can tell is found our home base, um, which is the studio.designersforlearning.org, and um, it's the link was in a, a prior email, and I think everybody's pretty much found their way there. Um, but that's really where I will be posting most of my blasts to everybody using it's a WordPress installation, so it's like a post that goes out. Um, and then uh, usually what I end up doing is once a week, there's something will creep in that would be worthy of making a, a blast, an email blast to everybody. So kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, but for the most part, as I mentioned, uh, the, the teams are, are pretty much broken, our, our big team is pretty much broken into some subsets, one being the subject matter experts. And um, just to kind of give a definition for who those folks are, um, they're like the proxy for our client on this project. Uh, in the past, we had Grace Centers of Hope. Um, that we worked with, but um, given our new mission and what we're trying to accomplish, it was our goal to expand our reach and, um, and talk to people in the adult basic education field that work in this area from a bunch of different perspectives. Um, so when you look on our team chart that we sent out last week, um, you can see I guess maybe it was at the beginning of this week, actually. Um, you can see uh, who the subject matter experts are and where they work and what their affiliation is. And then uh, we have two design teams. When I sent out the call for volunteers, I was hoping to get a handful of people to help me. Instead, we had 31 people. And of that, 27 uh, wanted to be designers. And so I do apologize to the folks that um, are in facilitation roles that were maybe a little bit disappointed. They were hoping to be on a design role. And we'll try our best to try to um, give you some exposure to the design side of things, um, but frankly, we just, um, for this particular project, we had more interest than we had positions. And so the two design teams we have, um, I added one called the Adult Learning Zone, and we'll talk about that in a moment. That's a new addition. That was something I thought I was going to have to do on my own, so I'm thrilled that we had 
um, people to be able to help me. Um, and then the other is for the adult basic education two-phase service course. So that's um, what I've described in, um, in several blasts as being phase one being the MOOC, which we at this point anticipate will be facilitated in Canvas. And then at the culmination of that, um, hopefully we'll have a nice core group of people who've stuck around with us through the MOOC five-week MOOC and want to hang on for a seven-week much smaller cohort um, where we'll have a lot more one-to-one -one, um, interaction when we um, you know, pump out the final deliverables on what they worked on during the MOOC. Um, and then the third group, we have facilitators. And um, I'm not sure if any of the facilitators are here tonight. Um, for the most part, the request for their participation really starts next next spring or late winter or early winter rather um, in February and so um, they're very everyone who is a facilitator you're more than welcome to lurk and follow along with what we're doing but in terms of um, you know you stepping up and, and, and volunteering this fall there's not um, not much for you to do at this point so just kind of hang tight and, and we'll circle back with you so here's what uh, I mentioned before is what I term our home base. Um, as I mentioned, it's an, a WordPress installation. Um, if you look along the top, um, you'll see the there are a couple different menus where it says home and then fall 2015. That row includes pretty much the main links for our project. Um, so we've got the, the event calendar. That's where I'll post if we're having a webinar. Um, there's the discussion, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, a Google Drive that I've set up. Um, either temporarily or if that turns out to be the place that everyone likes to store stuff, that's fine. But I usually find it's a good idea to have at least one repository where I can store things and others can at the get-go. And so that's a good place to dump some things. Um, we also then have the team chart and then any news that I post, um, you can find under the links for news. Um, and then when I talked a moment ago about the discussion forum, it's probably something we won't use a ton after the first couple weeks, but I do think it's um, a nice thing to have to um, facilitate some initial introductions and also to have a place where, um, again, again, in this whole concept of a home base, if you do have a question, that, for example, the designers want to ask a question to the um, to the subject matter experts, I've right now set up four different topic threads. Uh, for example, um, general questions or comments, questions and answers to our subject matter experts, or if you happen to run into a resource or something that you think might be uh, helpful to share. Um, and then as I mentioned on the top line there is the introduction. And I posted something before, it's just pointing people to where you can find me on Twitter and find me on LinkedIn or whatever. Um, and again, just in the spirit of, you know, we don't know each other and, and just post a few <laughs> tidbits about yourself to, to uh, as, as an introduction to the group. And we'll see where it goes from there. If it turns out, you know, there's a lot of traction and people like using the discussion forums, that's fine. We can use them. But what I've found historically is after the first couple of weeks, it kind of fades away into the, into the background. Um, and then if you notice on the right here where it says username and password, this evening I sent out emails to everybody um, setting up their username. And then you're allowed to then click on a link and then it will uh, ask you to reset your password. And that's how you access the discussion forum. So if you have any trouble finding that email or if, if you don't have the email, drop me a note um, or if you have any trouble logging in. Um, and then, like I said, just the simple request that um, if you have a moment in the next couple of days, uh, just to pop over there and just do a, a brief introduction about yourself and share as much information or as little as, as you want. And as I said, the, the Google Drive right now is set up as um, just a repository for things that we may be collecting, either in the short term or the long term as we go. Um, so there's adult education resources. I've actually put a, um, uh, a not a Google, um, a Word doc, or like a Google doc, rather, not a Word doc, a Google doc in there for adult, under adult ed resources. And it's where I've been storing links that I find helpful for this project. And feel free to add to that. Um, it's the same thing if you find, you know, you want to add some things for, uh, within your own teams. These are now, I'm turning it all over to you. So feel free to um, add to it as your teams choose. Or as, if you like Dropbox or you have some other thing, that's fine. Oh, yeah, and JR is saying he's seeing... Some say do not use. We had a little bit of a hiccup today with Google. Um, we had a Google Apps for um, for business for our nonprofit, and unfortunately that was uh, suspended. And so where it says do not use, it's simply because I'm locked out of it. So um, hopefully if you click, if you go, JR, to the, the home page again and can click on the, the link that's the now there, it should take you to this new section. So sorry about that. That was a little a Google hiccup to this afternoon. Of course, the timing couldn't have been better. 
Um, so just to give you a sense for the project evolution, um, as I mentioned, we started out two years ago, or actually 18 months ago, working with um, Grace Centers of Hope, and they are a mission in a, a homeless shelter and mission in excuse me, in uh, Pontiac, Michigan. And uh, we met up with them right at the time the GED was changing. The um, 2014 version changed substantially from prior editions. And so they were in need of some uh, instructional materials to backfill um, what they were able to get commercially because at the time the commercial uh, offerings weren't up to speed. And so through that process we realized you know, wow, there's really not, there's a, a, a huge emphasis on open educational resources in the K-12 world, um, but we did not see, we had a team actually go out and try to find what we could um, find in terms of open educational resources for adult learners, and it's just not there. Um, and even though the standards, the, as you saw in that email I sent out um, earlier, the college and career um, readiness standards dovetail with the Common Core standards, the instructional materials are still geared toward an, um, a child audience. So we've, we've pretty quickly found that um, while there may be a great resource on, on algebra or whatever it may be, when you start digging into it and the narratives that are part of the instruction, it's, um, it's fairly condescending to an adult audience. And um, our client in particular was not interested in most of the stuff that we were able to pull up from the open educational resource repositories, which has now then uh, brought us to where we are today saying, okay, well, if it's not out there, let's build it ourselves. And so we're moving away from just working independently with Grace Centers of Hope to um, having a much more broad scale development of adult basic education resources um, that anybody can access and use. And so our goals for this project then is to use this idea, we'll see how it works, this is going to be our pilot, to reach out to this broad audience of hundreds and hundreds of people within a MOOC to start out with and, um, and through a funneling process for those that stick with us to the end, hopefully we can increase the amount of uh, deliverables that we're able to produce that, um, that are giving the adult basic educators resources to be able to use. And so part of what we're doing now is to create that. That's what our, you know, the design team for the adult open uh, adult basic education will be helping me develop that experience. And, um, and then hopefully that will be rep replicable. So going in the future, we can just turn around every time one ends, we'll start another one up. And, um, and then the, uh, the second piece of that is to develop what I'm calling, and we're branding it the adult learning zone. And so it's going to be the platform that will actually then house these resources that the service learners create. And um, one of the big reasons, the bottom bullet point there, is a prototype for funders. It's, um, I've had a lot of conversations with people that this is our goal and this is what we're trying to do, but without having something tangible that people can see, uh, I'm having a hard time <laughs> explaining it. Um, so hopefully by the end of our first experience, come next spring, we're going to have uh, the, the Adult Learning Zone platform developed and we'll have it populated with, let's say, 25 to 30 resources that our, our student participants have developed. And then we'll be able to go out and, um, and seek external funding through grants or whatever it may be. And just to clarify, everything we've done to date is a 100% volunteer effort, and we've done everything with, um, with, with no outside funds. That's why we're using WordPress and other <laughs> free things like Google Forms and things like that. Um, oh, uh, JR said he just lost audio. Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. I think maybe it's a JR thing. Okay. So here's what I'm talking about regarding the adult learning zone. Again, this is a link. If you go to our homepage, um, our home base, you can see there's a link that says adult learning zone if you click on it. Now, this is very much a prototype. I threw this together very quickly when I realized I was going to have access to another design team. Um, I wanted to quickly get my ideas on paper or on virtual paper here on the website of what I'm talking about. And the idea is, um, as you'll see from the college and career readiness standards, um, things are, are in silos for math and English language art, ling English language arts. And then if you s uh, turn your focus a little bit over to the GED, there are also standards associated with science as well as social studies. And so those are kind of the four main categories, uh, math, English language arts, science, and social studies that require resources. And so the idea would be a person would come to the site, click on English language arts, say I need something for a grade level uh, 9 through 12. Um, I need something associated with, for example, paraphrasing and summarizing, could click on it, 
and then they would be taken to the deliverable page. And this is just, a, it, again, very quickly thrown together, my idea of what this page landing page would look like. So it would describe what the, um, what the uh, lesson is about, um, map it to the particular standard, um, that being the CCR standard as well as the, um, as the, the GED, um, and then have uh, a second tab for the materials, and then finally the attribution. Um, and Amanda's asking, let's see, I'm not sure if this is time to talk about this, but if you looked in the OER, yeah, the OER Commons is a repository, for sure we have. Um, and that's great. Actually, Amanda, do you have your, um, do you have your audio? This might be a great time to introduce you and, and your role, because you're very much going to be our subject matter expert on the project. Um, do you have your audio handy? I don't think Hello? she did. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, Please. sorry, I was clicking the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So welcome to the project. This is Amanda Duffy. Um, she works for the American Institutes of Research. And um, go take it from there. Sure. So I work at AIR, and I work in the adult learning group. And the reason why um, Jennifer contacted me and I'm connected to this project is because I've just completed two different projects, both working with adult educators to find, use, and review OER um, that are appropriate to adult learners. So the first group that we worked with, um, it was a STEM group, but we focused on science and math. And the second group is focused or was focused on ESL. And I brought up OER Commons um, because that is the site that we use because they have an OER evaluation embedded within it. Um, there is a space for standards alignment, but it's alignment to the Common Core and not the CCRS for adult learners. Um, but they do have options for comments, which it's, you know, that can be where um, some alignment happens. And they're actually pretty open to making modifications to the system. They added adult education as a, you know, quote unquote educational level um, where we could tag different resources that the teachers used. And it's just nice because teachers can create within that site and they can also um, add resources from outside of the commons. And um, Amanda, the, the one question, um, and that's perfect, that is perfect, and we had in our first group that we had um, in 2014 went out and found repositories like you're talking about, and, um, and so what, what we've encouraged all the designers to do is to find resources and then to repurpose them. We, specifically our client before was looking for something in what I call short bite lessons, so maybe a 30 minute to maximum of like 40 minute lesson that would be the time that the, the student would be sitting down. Um, and so do, in terms of, um, and again, I don't want to get too inside baseball <laughs> at this early stage, but um, what do you find to be a good deliverable for an adult educator? What type of resource are they looking for? Are they looking for something where they can just point a learner to like an e-learning module, or is this something that they want to take the like a, a lesson plan with the resources and sit down one-to-one -one with, a, with a learner? What, how, how does that typically work? Uh, from my experience, it's been finding something like you're talking about, that kind of 30-minute direct instruction that has different, you know, some differentiation included because we all know that, you know, adult ed classes, you know, no matter what test level they're, they're coming in at, the class is a mixed group. So having definitely having some options for differentiation. Um, and in my experience, it's been more uh, teacher and classroom as opposed to like a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Um, but having something for the teacher um, that they can then implement within the classroom a lot. And I think a uh, main reason for that is a lot of adult um, ed teachers do not have a lot of prep time. So they're looking for a high quality with very, very low time. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. And so, you know, chew on this, and, and certainly it's not something we need to think about or talk about a ton tonight, but um, this is something that we're going to be polling the subject matter experts um, as part of the design process, is to think about that. What what do these lesson materials, what should they look like? Should it look like a kind of traditional lesson plan where you have um, uh, an um, like an opening activity, you know, kind of going through it like that, as you're saying, kind of low touch for the teacher where, uh, and we're finding also, um, 
a lot of times the instructors are actually volunteer tutors and so they may come in just for the evening and they don't have uh, you know a lot of the luxury of having a lot of time to prep someone may just say okay you're working with such and such student tonight or you're working with such and such group um, in the church basement or whatever it may be um, and so the idea being you know, just can't handing them some materials to work or pointing them to our website or whatever it may be so so do think about that um, and then Eric, excellent question. So we'll be designing lessons for teachers. Um, let me, let me kind of move ahead a little bit because that is actually, I'm going to skip to this because we're kind of getting into these questions. Um, so to get to Eric's question, uh, who's the audience that we're targeting? Um, for, this is just something we need to think about and contemplate. And I have my idea of answers, but I, you know, the reason I invited everybody to in is to get a diversity of perspective, but we do have options. Is it something that we're trying to help people prepare for the GED exclusively or primarily for that purpose? Um, are we targeting the adult education tutors and instructors, or are we having this more of a site for learners or both? Um, or are we also going to expand this and contemplate other high school equivalency pathways? So maybe not necessarily what, what um, Amanda and I were just talking about, kind of that church basement, uh, one room schoolhouse kind of um, setup, but something different. Um, and then in terms of alignment, are we talking just exclusively college and career readiness standards? Are we going to branch out to look at next gen science standards? Um, the GED standards, and then that all kind of then snowballs into, based on the decisions you make there, um, how will this be presented? Will this be an OER repository for educators, or are we looking toward pivoting a little bit and making this more of like an LMS for learners? And um, to answer um, Eric's question, here's what I'm thinking are my likely assumptions, but you know, certainly that's why we're here to try to change, change, change the assumptions. Um, I'm guessing that we're primarily targeting a GED prep environment, primarily, maybe not exclusively, but primarily. Um, and then to really get to the heart of Eric's questions, uh, focusing on resources for the adult education um, instructor. So um, that would be the audience we're kind of targeting with the materials, even though they will be then in turn using them with, um, with adult learners. Um, the idea being it's not necessarily a place that adult learners would just uh, gravitate to to start working, working on materials such as like a Khan Academy or something like that. Um, and I, we've, I've heard this over and over and over, this whole idea of kind of the one-room schoolhouse um, where um, a, the adult educator may have um, five or six, seven, ten, whatever it may be, students they're working with, but they're all at different levels on the different subjects. And so um, they don't necessarily sit down with a group always and will like talk about math at a grade level nine. You may have somebody at grade level six in math and then, you know, some other level on, on the English language arts. Um, and so then, as we talked about already, kind of this idea of the quick bite modules, uh, 15 to 30 minute max of instructional times clearly mapped to the standards. Um, and so I, I hope that answers the question. I don't think I, I jumped around too much, but... Um, but that, hopefully that frames a little bit what, what it is we're shooting for. And then I, I know we've kind of quickly jumped into this whole idea of open educational resources and OER, and I do apologize. I, it, it's pretty standard lingo at this point, but if it's not, um, I just point you to Creative Commons. If you look at the bottom of the Adult Learning Zone page, um, it, that you can see how we are laying out our licensing on that site. Um, because we are a nonprofit with a charitable mission, we're very fine with making it the most liberal license, the Creative Commons um, Attribution 4.0. And uh, so anything that goes up on that site, anything designed uh, for us will, will go up there under that license. Um, so that, let's just set that aside. So let's set aside now the um, adult, um, I'm sorry, the, the kind of the MOOC set up side of things and talk a little bit about um, the adult learning zone platform in, in itself. Um, the, the, the deal with it right now is, as I mentioned a couple times, we don't have money now. We're using WordPress. We kind of have to live with it. So that being the case, it's, it's much more geared as like a content management system versus a learning management system where we'd turn the learners loose. Um, but that doesn't mean that's what it has to be forever. And so those uh, that are designated uh, right now on the adult learning zone design team, 
Um, it would be great if you have some WordPress experience. Um, and in fact, if, if you're a designer on the other team and you're going, gosh, this sounds a lot more interesting than working on the MOOC project, <laughs> We, you know, we can definitely shuffle the deck a little bit um, as far as that goes. Um, but the idea really is that the folks on the uh, adult, learn, um, adult, adult learning zone team will be very much involved in getting this, the, the platform up and running and also thinking very hard about what these um, lessons will look like and uh, preparing like a style guide that the service learners will use to, um, to prepare the, the materials. And so that's what that team is all about. And again, hopefully we're going to dream big and hopefully in the not too distant, fu distant future we'll have our ducks in a row and get some, some money in our pockets and, um, and we can think about um, a, a bigger next iteration. And so let's talk a little bit now about the, what this service learning experience will look like in the, in the February timeframe. So I've talked a little bit before about it being a MOOC on the Canvas platform. I've already started working with the Canvas folks as far as giving them our preliminary ideas. And um, they said, well, at a minimum, you can estimate 600 will enroll. And usually for a first time class, we cap at 25. So that just makes me, 2,500. Um, so that just makes me chuckle. Um, I can't imagine. <laughs> I've never worked on anything um, of that scale so we'll see how that goes um, and the idea I've, I mentioned a little bit before um, the, through the five-week experience we'll um, have the make it much like a design challenge saying here are the GED or the CCR standards pick a topic you're interested in um, get them working through some exercises thinking about the learner thinking about the context um, thinking about what the learner activities need to be and then have them, and we talked about it a little bit before we started the recording with JR, have some type of external representation of what their design proposal will be, what their design pitch will be. And, um, and that's, we're gonna have to figure out um, what that looks like, but at the end of the five week MOOC, whoever's left with us and stuck with us, there's huge, as everyone knows, um, attrition problems <laughs> in MOOCs. And so let's say we end up going from 600 and at the end of the day, we've got 30 people that hung with us. Um, we'll take that group and then work with them more on a one-to-one -one basis for seven weeks, um, much more hands-on where they develop a prototype, the prototype goes through an evaluation process, and then finally they turn into deliverable. And that looks a lot m more like what we've done historically um, with our service learning projects before. Um, so the open ABE design team will be designing that. Um, and then thinking quite a bit about in the next few weeks about what are these course goals. I kind of gave you a quick high level thought process of what, what I think the course should look like, the MOOC should look like. Um, but we do need to actually develop and uh, design and develop that and, um, and work with the Canvas folks to get that up on their, on their site. Um, and, oh, another important thing that the, that team will be doing, we also have the luxury we had, um, as I mentioned, so many people were, were volunteering. I believe we have I think we have eight or nine people who've raised their hand to be course facilitators. Um, so those will be folks that work with the students once we implement the MOOC and the cohort. And so we have to think about what those folks will be doing once the, once the course actually gets underway. Um, and here's just a chart. And I, I know I probably said it a couple different times, but you can download these, this slide. So it's, I know it's probably small to try to read, but this just gives a general schematic of what I envision the MOOC's gonna look like and what the, uh, uh, the cohort's gonna look like once we split things out. Um, so you can take a look at that on your, on your own. Um, so the question that creeps up a lot is, um, is why would the service learners, why would people, just random people, <laughs> take our MOOC? And how do I seem to think we're going to get 600 people? And I cannot tell you, well, I can tell you, actually. Uh, I think in one of the um, uh, posts that I made, I pointed you to the contacts that we get. Uh, we've had, I think we're up to like 300 people who've just randomly found our website, either through meeting me at a conference or through Twitter or on LinkedIn or whatever it may be. And people are just hungry for experience. A lot of people are career changers or maybe they dabble in instructional design in their job or maybe they have to do instructional design but never had training. And so I think we won't have much trouble getting people who want to use this as an opportunity to gain experience. And the way what we would be offering them is the opportunity to think about 
um, how goals, needs, constraints, the learners and the context influence your design, um, how you come up with an instructional solution, and that would be pretty much the, the emphasis of the first MOOC, and then we get more into the development side of things within the cohort, where they actually are putting together the prototype, um, going through some type of evaluation process during that seven weeks, getting feedback from the subject matter experts, the facilitators, and refining those develop, um, deliverables. Um, so that's kind of our value proposition for the, the, the service learners that may want to, um, to, to, to join us. That's what they'd be getting out of the deal. So they would be volunteering their time to help us develop these modules and in turn they'd be gaining experience. So I mentioned um, already the facilitators, please hang tight. Definitely lurk if you're if you have the time and the desire. We'll circle back to you more around the December time frame and start really refining what your role will be during the implementation. But in a nutshell, um, we'll be looking for you to help us provide feedback and, and support to the service learners once we get um, get underway um, in assessing the students' work. And then um, also once the project is underway, we still will have the need to occasionally tap into our subject matter experts when the students have questions, uh, the service learners have questions that we can't answer. Um, and so that we actually did quite a bit in the past working with Grace Centers of Hope. Once the students were starting to work, you, you just can't imagine, well, you probably can because most of you are educators, you can imagine <laughs> the, uh, the kind of curveball questions you get that we're just not unable to answer. And so that's going to be the facilitator's job is to, um, to field those and make sure people are getting the answers they need as they're, as they're working through things. Um, so in terms of uh, a time frame um, ish, uh, everything is subject uh, to to change. But I think if we really want to pull this off, we've got to be pretty close to these dates. Um, we're going to be working pretty hard from now till October 15th to really get these deliverable aims confirmed. Um, really think through uh, what we need, what Canvas is going to be looking for from us, and I'll share that with that design team. They have a, a proposal that we need to fill out that has, I, I think it's like eight or nine pages of things that they require from us. Um, and then once that uh, is is underway. Um, We'll, we'll really shoot for getting everything finalized for the phase one um, by December 1st and then by December 31st, make sure we have our ducks in a row as far as the phase two, shooting for an implementation of February 1st for the first phase and then March 21st for the second. Um, so next steps, um, again, Phyllis facilitators hang tight. Um, the adult learning zone, the two design teams um, and specifically the adult learning zone. What I'd love to do in the next week before September 11th is, um, oh, what JR is asking, does that mean the MOOC opens December 1st? No, it just means that we have everything done. Um, Canvas requires, I think it's eight weeks that they want all of the materials in their hands so they can start uploading it and doing what they need to do. Or I guess we, we really have the opportunity to do a lot of uploading ourselves, but in terms of like getting us set up, uh, you know, it's, it's the same Canvas installation that any you know higher ed or whatever would use. So they basically just get us set up with our only own little corner of Canvas. Um, and so they ask for all that to pretty much be done eight weeks before you're ready to kick off. And um, okay, so back to the next steps. So what I'd like to do with the two design teams is hold separate meetings. Um, so, so small group meetings and uh, I think what I'll do is maybe tomorrow I don't know if everybody even has each other's emails so I'll send out separate emails to each design team um, trying to determine a good date sometime between now and September 11th to, um, st to start really framing what we need to do and um, one of the first uh, orders or first things on our list is I've started to draft a survey for our subject matter experts to ask them some of the questions that we've brought up tonight. And, um, and hopefully we'll come to some degree of consensus among the subject matter experts and the design teams to help us answer those questions that I mentioned earlier. And, um, and again, the focus for this group will really be on that, um, on designing the adult learning zone platform and then, and then thinking about what the deliverables are going to look like, the volunteer deliverables. Um, and then pivoting over to the adult I'm sorry, the uh, open ABE group, same thing. Let's try to get uh, a meeting scheduled between now and September 11th. Um, you'll also be helping um, conceive the, the survey, the questions that will be on it, make sure we're covering all the questions you think are relevant. And then, um, again, your focus really at the get-go will be to try to think through what this MOOC is going to look like. Um, and kind of hand in hand contemplating the phase two, but really our, our first push is going to be thinking through what we need to do to design this MOOC. 
and then sneeze. Um, we'd love it as Amanda's already done tonight. Um, if you have resources, if you wouldn't mind starting to share those either through the Google folder or if you want to use that discussion forum section that talks about resources. Um, I think hopefully I've given you a little bit of a lay of the land of what we're shooting for and hopefully it sparked a few ideas in terms of resources you use that are helpful or you want to stop us before we go off a wrong path or whatever it may be. Um, if you wouldn't mind, you know, posting those things either in the discussion forums or um, or, or in the content repositories, the, the, um, the, the Google Drive. And then uh, just keep an eye out, just kind of hang tight a little bit here for the next couple of weeks. We'll hit you pretty hard for for um, for your input in the next couple of weeks when we when we turn this survey around probably and I would envision what will happen we'll send the survey out to you we'll get the responses and maybe we'll follow up with some um, one to one email or maybe ask for for a small group webinar or something to answer our questions just very much in the spirit of you know needs analysis um, to make sure we're we're hitting on all the right things um, so that's all I have it's 7:35 that's pretty good I. I I was hoping I could stop talking at this point. So I'm just going to turn it over um, to the group. First of all, I guess the question I have for the, especially the designers, um, are you pleased with the design team you ended up with or does anyone want to contemplate switching? So, you know, for example, if you're a WordPress expert, you want to work on the adult learning zone platform or you want to contemplate switching over to the other team. Anybody fall in that category? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Okay, I'm, I'm taking that as everybody's happy with where they're at. Um, let's see, requirements, uh, okay, fine with, okay, good. Oh, okay, that's good. So Gio, um, I've got you on the other team. Uh, do, would you rather work with the um, adult learning zone side of things? I think you are, you're in the other group. Well, for, I guess that's a good question, too. So Gio's saying he's, um, okay, so maybe we'll switch Gio over. Is there anybody else that's that, uh, a big fan of WordPress or, you know, would like to switch? Okay, so Gio, I think I'll switch you. That, and, you know, I'm sure you're dying laughing. Okay, just to give everybody a background, Gio's a, let's see, you went to the Savannah, what is it, um, School of Design or whatever. <laughs> so I'm sure he's looking at my... Um, my handiwork on the adult learning zone and going, oh my gosh, yes, this woman needs help, help on, <laughs> on her design. Yeah, there you go, Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, that was not my background. Um, shockingly, I have my MBA, um, which I think you can tell when you see my, my design creations. It's uh, not particularly creative, um, but it gets the job done most of the time. So that's really all I had um, for tonight. And... Um, Little asterisk. Oh, okay. Eric had a. Oh, yes. The little asterisk means you had also a few of you had um, requested or mentioned that you'd like to c continue on and be a facilitator. And so, if you're still interested, Eric and I think it was Jr. and maybe Josh. I guess um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but that what is what I think it is. That um, that's what that means. So, if you're interested in continuing on and um, and being a facilitator. And there were a few of you that didn't want to do that. So, and I think Amanda did, or somebody had their hand up. Please go ahead if you want to say something. Oh, yeah, Josh. Yeah, also. If, if that's okay, you know, if you guys come in February, if you've said you've had enough, I totally get it. <laughs> but, um, or maybe if you uh, hadn't raised your hand to be a facilitator and you want to hang around in the spring, that's, that's fine too. I'm, I'm guessing if we get the numbers we're contemplating in the hundreds, more hands are better than fewer. So, ah, how are we recruiting, recruiting for the MOOC? Excellent question. So, Amanda, um, as you know, I just found Amanda just doing a Google search. I found the great work she's doing with OER for adult basic education. So, there's a whole world out there that most of us in the instructional design world does not know about. So, we will definitely be asking our subject matter experts to help us. So we'll have kind of press release type things um, that we'll ask you to put out on your listservs and your groups that you work with, Twitter. It's, it's kind of become like almost exponential how our, how our word is getting out. It's kind of freaking me out because we, we started out with, you know, a dozen people that were on our uh, um, e email list. And, and now I think at last count we were at 900. So it's kind of weird how fast this is happening. 
Um, and yeah, so there are two design groups. So the one group will be focusing more on the design of the MOOC and the other group will be thinking about the um, adult learning zone platform. So Amanda, did you have any thoughts or anybody have thoughts on that, how to attract people? I would imagine, um, Amanda, a lot of the folks that you work with would be interested. Yeah, for sure. I know a lot of the user group members that I worked with, um, they want to keep going and we had, you know, kind of similar to what you were saying earlier, we had for the ESL one specifically over 200 applicants and we could only take 20. So I have a bunch of lists and, you know, we can use links and the, um, the different communities within that because I, I know they need it and they want it really badly. So um, I think you might get your 600. <laughs> And then um, that brings up a good point. Uh, we mentioned in an email, I think it was last week, or maybe on one of the posts, that Amanda was involved in a group discussion at Lynx. And uh, do you want to just mention what that is, Amanda? Because it just is a great group for us as, as we're trying to get our head around the context and the learners. Um, it's, it's a really great organization to understand. Sure. So Lynx is, uh, I always forget what it stands for. It's like literacy information communication system and it's sponsored through the Department of Education, the adult ed um, branch, and there are multiple threads like college and career readiness, language learners, math, technology, et cetera, et cetera, um, where people from the field can post questions um, and share resources and they have sponsored conversations that usually last about a week. So the one that I just did was about how OER can support English language learning um, and teaching. And, and so it, it just wound up, right? Join, yeah, yeah, it just wound up yesterday. Um, I'm assuming that some people will continue to post, but um, you know, through that work and the previous work, I have a ton of resources, so I'm going to share them on the discussion thread with everyone. Kind of like you said, we don't need to recreate the wheel because it's OER. We can modify people. Um, the designers can just modify what already exists because there's a lot of great aligned resources, but it's just not geared towards adult ed. Right, right. That's great. Well, we're so excited to have you and everybody along. Um, and again, I don't know how this works, but it somehow manages to work. <laughs> you know, virtually, we don't know each other right now, but trust me, by the uh, you know end of this year, we'll we'll all consider each other's colleagues, which is really cool and amazing. So, um, well, well, with that, I'm going to let everybody go because I think nobody's really. Uh, <laughs> has the courage at this point to uh, to raise their hand. So um, so I guess the next steps will be for the two design teams. I'll send out a, probably a doodle to each of you. Try to get a date on your calendar from now until the 11th. And then, as I said, the facilitators hang tight, subject matter experts hang tight for a while. And um, if you do get around to it, hop over to the our website and, and post an introduction so we can get to know you better. Well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good night.